Hey, want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? Hey, want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? What's up everybody? I'm back with another video. As you can see there, I built myself a bed lift. Pretty exciting stuff. Now, before I get into this and explain how I did this, I'm gonna give a shout out to the couple who did this, where I got this idea from, and I'll link them below. Um, I think their channel is called Drifter Journey, and they built a bed lift like this one, but theirs doesn't go as high as mine, and I did things a little bit differently, but pretty similar. Um, so you can go ahead and check out their video. I'll link that video below. And then uh, you can see how they did it. You can watch this video and see how I did it. And maybe you can come up with your own way to do it. Or you can copy one of our ways of doing it and have yourself a lift bed. So this is the lift bed. And right now, of course, obviously, there is no platform on top of the bed frame yet, but that's coming. I wanted to first explain how I built this and engineered this thing before I Put anything on it so that I can explain it a lot easier than if I had a platform on it and other things done. So um, with that being said, I'm not sure what, where to begin. Um, let's start here. Okay, so Drifter Journey, they did the same thing that I did and used this Unistrut slash Super Strut that you can buy for $20 for a 10 foot piece at Lowe's or Home Depot or wherever. And this is mounted to the inside wall of the van with some bolts. And these bolts go into rib nuts that are in here. You can look up rib nuts if you don't know what those are. Now, Drifter Journey, they installed one across here. And then they also installed a couple going down to the floor for more support. I did that originally, but I got rid of those because I didn't think it was necessary. I think this is plenty strong enough as it is. So this system... Okay, so... I have the Unistrut, and then I went out and I picked up this extruded aluminum. This is from 8020 brand, I believe. And this is the 1530 series, meaning it's one and a half inches by three inches. And this was a 12 foot piece, and that cost about $206, I believe. And so there's four of these beams across, and each of them are about three feet, okay? A little bit under three feet. So these things, get bolted to the Unistrut, and Unistrut sells inserts where you, you insert a, uh, a nut in here, and then this gets bolted into the nut behind this inside of the Unistrut. For the top, let me back this let me back this down a little bit and show you. And while I do that, I'll just show you the switches I have here, temporarily in place, and I'll explain those in a little bit. But I'm gonna bring this down a little bit and show you the top part. So the top part here, is bolted to also the inside wall of the van. I had to drill a hole here and I inserted, inserted a rivet nut in the wall of the van behind the extruded aluminum and I put a bolt in there and I bolted it to the wall. This is where it gets complicated. So in order to make this work, obviously it has to be square all the way across or you're going to uh, twist the bed frame and bind things. So this was the hardest part in my opinion was getting it completely square and basically how I did that was just measured a lot with a measuring tape and a measuring square and I ended up having to add I'm not sure if you can see this back here I'll go from the other direction where there's some light coming in back there I have I have two Unistrut washers they're about a quarter inch thick I believe I can't really get back there enough and then Sandwiched between two of the washers, I have a roughly eighth inch piece of heavy mass vinyl that I cut into a square to fit there. That helped me get my dimensions accurate across within a sixteenth of an inch. And then on the top here, you probably can't see it from that side. If you look closely, you'll see I have a eighth inch piece of heavy mass vinyl sandwiched between the wall and the top of this extruded aluminum. The reason I did that was to make it square and it's also going to provide some dampening 
with perhaps you know the bed moving around and shaking and it should be it should also create a, uh, a barrier for heat and um, cold weather to contact the frame and make the frame cold or hot okay I'm not sure if I said that correctly but that's hopefully you know what I mean okay so what's next on this so after after I got the unit strut in place on both sides and over there and oh I ended up using all factory holes they actually look like this one um, I used those I should have probably cut my own but they're actually working quite well and that's what I use for the rivnets. nuts and I didn't drill any additional holes to mount this and it's not going anywhere okay so after I got this done on both sides I made sure it was the same length the same height everything was square I then went out and I purchased these cut them and put them in as I just explained how I did with the bolts and the spacers behind there and then I purchased what we have here is a 80 20 product and it is a linear bearing that slides up and down these grooves nice and smooth okay and there's one on all four corners of course okay linear bearing okay after I got this linear bearing in the mail I also had I was also had this device waiting and these are linear actuators I got on Amazon and let me get this out of the way a little bit if I can I guess I can't so this is a linear actuator with the motor on the bottom and it just spins and rotates and this doesn't rotate but whatever's inside of here does or yeah there's got to be something in there I'm not quite sure how these work exactly but it spins and then this thing this pole lifts up and this is a 22 inch stroke so my bed goes from down here where it sits when I'm sleeping and then it will go all the way up here even much higher which I'll raise again right now until it stops so four of these guys each one of is each one of these is rated at 225 pounds so we have about what is that I don't know 900 pounds and it's solid um, I've been testing it out and yes it's very solid okay what can I explain to you next let me explain a couple things I did different than the uh, drifters channel did so let me get to some better light here let's go to this one so these linear actuators here I gotta get my camera screen on there we go okay these uh, linear actu actuators they, they come with a hole in in the top here with a bracket that's about another inch or two high let me let me grab that bracket and show you what I'm talking about let's see is it in this pile of stuff well, while I'm at it this is for unistrut this slides in the unistrut channel and this is I bolted my extruded aluminum to the unistrut and to the wall so that my bed can slide up and down with the linear bearing okay here we go this is a this is what the linear actuator comes with it comes with two of these one, one for the top and one for the bottom so basically on the top here this would normally mount to the top of this pole so it gives you an extra about two inches in the rear and then it's on a little pin so this thing can um, pivot back and forth I guess if you don't make it perfectly straight or however that works and then you would mount this to whatever you would mount it to so so I could have just mounted this somehow to the linear actuator like that or whatever but after messing around with this, I decided I didn't want to do that. Um, first of all, it gave me too much more height that I didn't want. And dealing with this thing and that pin that goes through here and then a cotter pin, I didn't like that. So I ended up removing this from the top. And instead, I drilled the hole that was already established here a little bit bigger so I could fit a, uh, I think it's a 3 8 bolt through this. So the bolt goes from here through this, through the linear bearing, and then it connects inside of here to a extruded aluminum um, insert nut there that black piece so this is what holds these things together now for the bottom I also did this differently I'm not gonna be able to show you this unfortunately because it's hidden tucked away underneath this piece of wood but normally on the very bottom of this you would have another one of these brackets that this would attach to so underneath this base plate here is a little knob that comes out maybe about three quarters of an inch and it would sit in here and you would put another pin through here and then another cotter pin on the other side. So that would also increase the height of the actuator by another two inches or so. And I also didn't want that. So I removed these from the bottom and I cut out these square pieces of wood and I drilled a hole just too small for that little knob that comes out of the bottom of the plate here for that to get pressure fit into this piece of wood, um, which holds it securely to the floor. So far, 
I haven't had any problems with this coming out of the hole, but I may have problems in the future. So likely what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some sort of strap that I can bolt from here um, and then over the top of the motor and down to the other side so that if for whatever reason this thing decides it wants to come loose, can't. I'll figure something out about this eventually. But for now it's holding holding up great. None of, none of them have popped out. So there's a wooden plate on all sides, or on all four corners where, they actu where the linear actuators are. Just like there, and just like right there. Now, let me explain the next part to you. Let's, let's do a recap. Unistrut mounted to the wall. Unistrut mounted to the wall. Um, 1530 extruded aluminum mounted to the unistrut and mounted to the interior wall up here with some spacers to make this square and to make the back square. Then I installed these linear actuators which connect to a bearing, a linear bearing that belongs to this extruded aluminum. This slides up and down when the actuator goes up and down and it brings the bed down. Yeah. How exciting, right? I mean, it is pretty cool. So this stuff on top is also extruded aluminum. This is by a company called Park, Park, Parkour, Parkoy, I think. Shoot, I forget at the moment. Um, but it's another brand, not 8020. And basically, um, well, let me go, let me, let me go back. Okay, so let me talk about some more pricing. Okay, I told you that the Unistrut is about $20 for a 10 footer at Lowe's or Home Depot. I believe I told you that a 12 foot section of this 1530 extruded aluminum is about $200. These linear actuators were about $50 a piece on Amazon. Um, this is where it gets kind of crazy, I know, but these linear bearings were $80 each and I had to order them on Amazon and they came from the East Coast somewhere like New Jersey or something. Um, 80-20 sells them on their own website for about $60 each, but then you have to pay shipping. It probably would have been about the same price. Um, so that's the cost of that. Then this is another series of 8020 or extruded aluminum, I should say. And this is the 15, 15 series, so fifth, an inch and a half square. And these go for about $80 for a 10 foot section. And I used three of them to complete the frame on top. Okay. Additionally, I had to buy these corner brackets and I bought 12 of them and they are about $3.50 each. And they're also aluminum and they're designed to work with this same company. And um, I just sourced some bolts from Home Depot um, for these since they're a little bit cheaper. And then of course, the way this works behind all of this, behind these channels are the inserts, the nut inserts. You slide them in there first and then you can bolt, you can bolt these to them. I think that about covers it to be honest. I mean, that's how you do it. Um, so I made sure everything was really, really square, like in every direction that you could imagine. Um, I think, yeah, I believe this this section from, from over here to over there is about a 16th of an inch off compared to the back. I was a little worried that that would create an issue with this sliding up and down, but it doesn't. And the reason it doesn't, I believe, is because these linear bearings, if you can see inside of here, let's, get, let's go to the back. If you can see back here, there is some plastic, that's that's the bearing there that rides in there. And I believe there's a little bit of play within these bearings. Um, I mean, that's play going up, but there's also play going back and forth at some point, I believe. So I think that helped out. I don't think a 16th of an inch would have really created that much of a problem anyways. So what I did is I brought these 10 footers home and I cut them using a miter saw with a Diablo aluminum cutting blade. Those blades cost about $70 or $80 a piece, but they're like one of the best blades you can buy for cutting aluminum. And it cut really, really nice, clean cuts. So I came home and I cut, first I cut the ones going from the back to the front. And this is 54 inches, which is the same width as a uh, double mattress. And then I cut the other side all the way down. And then I got those installed and I tested them and make sure they go up nice. And then I cut this, I cut the front and back pieces like this to go across, installed those. Same with the back way back there. And then I added these support beams in the middle, every third, and now I have a solid bed frame. Okay. Um, the last thing I can show you really about this is, um, 
the way that it, it works. Okay, so all of these actuators are powered independently and the back, the back two actuators right over there are connected together so they work at the same time and then the front ones are connected together to run at the same time. That's how the Drifter Journey Channel did it and I liked that idea so I stuck with that. Um, that allows you to slightly level the bed from back to front if you're parked on an uneven surface because there's two switches. Um, I haven't really tested it completely yet to know how much I can dip differ between the two because I really don't want to break anything or bend anything. So I'm going to be conscious and careful of that when I use this system. And you know just maybe a two inch um, difference between the back and the front if I absolutely need it. So all those wires are ran. This is one running right here across and then it runs down through here and a bunch of stuff connects all in here. And these are also, these are called Wago connectors and they're really sweet. Um, I found them from George from Humble Road, the van builder. Um, he has a lot of good ideas too. You can run over to his channel and check his stuff out. But these Wago connectors are so nice because they're so easy to work with. And um, while you're building things, you can just snap them, you can just take them off. They just unsnap really easily. These little orange clips come up. You can pull the wires out. And then maybe when you're, when you're, when you're done, you can either you know, solder them together or you can keep these connectors here and tape them together so they don't come apart. But anyways, so all the wires come down to this chunk of wire you mess. And then they go to roll up here. And then I have this one that runs this way. I have two actually that run this way for the back set of actuators and the front set. And then they come through here. It's getting dark in here. And then they go to the switch. So these two switches will lower the bed. So if I push these down, the bed will lower. And if I push them up, the bed will lift. It's that simple. And then of course, the power goes on this temporary cable. Don't yell at me. This cable is just here for now. It will be fixed later. And I accidentally bought um, solid wire instead of stranded wire. So I'm gonna be replacing this with stranded wire. And I'll be running it down to my battery bank. <clears throat> which is right there right now, but it will be over there eventually. So I'm gonna be running wires from, and I'm not sure where the switches go, gonna, the switches are gonna go yet. They're just temporarily here until I figure out where I'm gonna put them. But I think I'm gonna put the switches over here somewhere on this wall because I'm planning to have a refrigerator on this wall. So then I'll just be able to come over here and hit the switches and lower the bed when I'm ready to go to sleep or I can lift the bed when I'm ready to go to work because I'm planning on building a workstation underneath the bed with my computer and a bench and a desk and all that good stuff. So that's basically it. I think I shot this in one video. I'm gonna edit it down because there's some mistakes I made, but that's the bed lift system. That's how it works. Uh, let me show you one more time how it lowers from a different angle than I showed you in the beginning of this video. So you hit the switches down. Let me show you just doing the front. So this is the front because it's the front button. This is the back because it's the back button. So here's just the front. Uh-oh. So got a little disconnected here with my, my wire system. Come on, get in there. Come on, buddy. Yeah, this this uh, solid wire really sucks to work with, so come on, stay on there. That should be good. I'm trying to bump that. Okay, just the front. I can hear binding a little bit already. So, I mean, That's about as far as I can go, I think. Oh crap, the button fell in. See, I knew that's gonna be a problem. <sighs> Gotta get the button out. The button fell in there. This is temporary. Well, let's just push these through here for now. I like them down here better anyways. All right, there we go. So now I don't know which one's which, but I think this one is the, the front. And this is the back now. <gasps> Uh-oh. Okay, so that's the back, this is the front. Anyways, I think this is about as much, I think this is about as far as I'm gonna feel comfortable going. Probably not even that much, because obviously this is gonna cause some problems or damage things. So that's how much of an incline I am happy to give it. Let's go up on the back a little bit. Yeah, I can hear it binding already. The sound is different. So I'm not gonna mess with that. Let's bring the back down to level it out. There we go. And I have to try to push both these buttons at the same time because they fell out of the hole. There we go. And let's bring the bed down. 
I'll give you an idea of what the bed is like when it's down, the height of the bed. I'm really, really happy, I gotta say, with um, the way that it turned out. I spent a lot of money on this. Um, I can tell you everything. Unistrut, actuators, extruded aluminum, hardware for the aluminum, bolts, all that stuff, and the bearing, the linear bearings, everything came out to around $1,200, which is pretty pricey to have this sort of like feature in your van. But if you look at it this way, there's companies out there that make kits that do the same, the same thing really. And they can cost $2,000, $3,000 upwards of that. So I think this is a pretty good deal. And I think this was pretty necessary for me to have in this van uh, based on how I plan on using this van. So this is the height it's at when you sleep. It's hard to say how high it is, but I can grab this tape measure and tell you. Uh, get here. So from the floor to the top is about 34 and a half inches. Floor to the bottom, about 33 and a quarter. And then of course you have a mattress on top of this. So I'm gonna have probably a four to six inch mattress, probably six inch. So then you're gonna be looking at, um, you know, 34 and a half or 40 and a half inches, which is pretty tall. Um, but I think at 5'10", I think I can get up there with a little hop or I can step on a stool and get up there. Now I'm gonna sit on it. I don't have much, I don't have much, I don't really have anywhere to sit exactly yet, just on these bars, but it's pretty damn strong. Let's see if I can get over here, lay down, but lay on it a little bit. All right. Yep, pretty strong. 250 pounds right here. So that's the system, guys. And I can tell you that when the bed's up, I'm gonna bring it up and I'll explain some more. I'm gonna set this camera down here for a minute. Because it's really hard to do this with one hand safely. Hey, want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? Oh, and by the way, the sound might come across really loud on camera. I bet it will, but it's not nearly as loud in person. It's much, much quieter. Hey. Want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? I like holding the switches in versus having a switch that you just turn on and walk away from because I don't want to accidentally have something go wrong. Manually do it and make sure that the bed is going up properly or down. Hey, want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? Okay, now we're up again. So one thing I want to mention here real quick is, yes, all these linear actuators are at different speeds. If you couldn't notice from the video or hear it from the sound, this one right here, I would say this is the driver's side front one. This one is the fastest. Then I believe it's that one back there is the second fastest. And then this one passenger side front is third fastest and fourth fastest. That, that may not be ideal for a lot of people, but for $50 a piece, I'm not gonna complain. You can buy controllers that control them. Not for these ones, but you can buy better actuators and that come with controllers, kind of like a stand-up desk where you can have um, your desk come up and then you can set memories for it. So you can buy those modules and everything, but you're gonna spend another thousand dollars on them. That's not really something I'm concerned about. So this one goes up, that one goes up, this one goes up, and that one finishes off in the end. So that's it guys, that's it. Um, I wanted to show you one more thing. Like I said, I'm gonna be working under here. I'm gonna have a desk, everything like that. So when I go underneath, I can sit on this water tank I put in. This is a 28 gallon, wa 28 gallon water tank that I'll be, be setting up at some point. But here I am sitting here and I have, I don't know, what was that four inches? And I'm actually sitting higher than I will be sitting when I build my bench. This is about 21 inches high, I think. So I'm gonna be, even a couple inches lower than I am now. And if you ask me, I have plenty of headroom to sit here and work and do what I have to do. Well, guys, that's it. I hope you liked my explanation of my van bed lift system. If you have any questions, 
leave them below. I probably left out a lot of stuff that you're curious about. So leave any questions you have below, um, and I'll try to do my best to answer them. Uh, this channel is super new, of course. I have like 30 subscribers, so I'm not really expecting uh, a lot of questions, but someone might come across this video and have some questions. So, um, yeah, let me know, and I'll do what I can to help you out. Other than that, um, I'm going to wrap this video up. I'm going to edit it together and get it up for you guys so you can check it out. Um, before I go, uh, I want to show you one thing. Okay, oh, look at my toilet. <laughs>